princess, if you're new here, you're welcome to the Deeper Life Bible Church singles YouTube channel. My name is Princess and on this channel we talk about Christian relationship. We talk about how to court efficiently, how to marry in the Lord and we have counsels that are going to you about how to go about knowing the will of God, marrying a man after God's own heart. That's our objective here. We have a YouTube channel as you see here. We are also on Facebook and we are called Deep Alive Bible Church Singles. We are also on Instagram, DLB Singles. All our old subscribers, you are welcome back to another discussion. We, as usual, are happy to see you. Thank you for being part of this family. For all the new viewers, you're welcome to join the family. We are a family of Christian young people and we want to marry in the Lord, build Christian godly homes. That's our objective. That's the aim of why we talk and discuss and share our minds about how to do marriage the God's own way. Today we're just going to be talking about some important tips for those people who want to marry. You want to marry a man, a woman, Christian man, a Christian woman. But what are the things that are very important that must be retained? First of all, you need to understand, I'm going to be reading from my notes here, that you need to understand that God should be at the center of it. Everything about your marriage should start with God. God first. And if you build your marriage around God, everything will work according to his guidance. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing. Everything will be added unto you. That's the word of God. And the same way, if you start with God, if you invite him and let him know that you cannot do marriage, you cannot find the right partner without his help, then you make him the center of it all. Secondly, understand that love is a choice. I'll say that again. Love, it's a choice. It's not just a merely a feeling. It's not just a feeling. It's not enough to, to have some feelings, butterflies. It's not enough. Marriage is more than that. Marriage is a journey of a lifetime. It's a journey that you will do till death do you part. And that's the reason why you need to first establish this fact that marriage, love, is a choice. And you need to love your partner. That's the essence of being married. It's two people who love each other, who are free, and who want to spend the rest of their life together, building a home, building a marriage, starting together as one. But love is the center of it all. And love is a choice. It means that when you started to live together and problems come and challenges are in the family, your love for each other, which is your choice to love one another, will keep you going for a very long time. You remember that I have chosen to love this man. I chose to love this woman. And that will keep you going for a long, long, long time till death do you part. Also understand that you have a mission statement for your marriage and family. You need to have a mission statement. What do you want to do? How do you want to go about this marriage? What's the objective of our marriage together? Some people have a mission statement that will never go to bed without resolving any issue. What's your mission statement for your home? Create one if you have not, or when you get married, because these are singles here, when you get married, have a mission statement for your marriage and your family. Very important, very important. You need to respect and honor each other. Respect and honor each other. A marriage without respect will soon fall apart. If you do not respect each other, you do not love each other, you soon discover that your marriage will begin to fall apart because respect is something that everybody wants. Even my kids want to be respected. They want you to say please and thank you. And that's what we teach even our children. So how much more? Two adult people living together, you will hurt with each other. But when you respect and honor, first respect each other's feelings, you don't want to hurt your partner. And when you hurt them, you are quick to apologize. And when you honor your partner, you try. Just let's look at it this way. When you honor your mother and your father, you do everything that will not make them ashamed. You do everything that when people see you out there and they say this is the son or daughter of so and so, it brings honor to their name. It brings, it makes them proud to be your parents. So honoring one another in marriage will never make you do dishonorable things. You will never be found in a place that is wanting. You will never be found in a place that a married woman or a married man will not be. You will never be found in a place in the company of people that as a married person you'll be questionable. You'll never do anything that's questionable any longer. You'll never be found in a position that is questionable. That's how to honor one another. Honoring one another, preferring one another, doing everything and anything that will make this person, as the Bible says of the Proverbs 31 woman, her husband stands in the gates and his people 
Look at him, they praise him. He is praised among other men. He is proud to be a husband. Same thing applies to the men. Whatever you're doing, whatever lady you relate with, whatever person that you, you have relationship with, everything is honorable. They can never point an accusing finger to you. That's what it means to honor one another. You respect one another. For ladies, men want to be respected. They don't want their ego to be bashed. So you respect your husband. Talk to him nicely. When you respect somebody, you don't just embarrass them in the public. You don't just talk them down in the public. You don't just humiliate them. You treat them with respect, with regard. And even when you relate with them, as you relate when people watch you from afar, they know there is respect and honor within this couple, in this family. Talk to one another with kindness. You act with one another with kindness. Like Christ, giving his life for the church, for us as sinners, died in our place. And even when they were nailing him to the cross, he never uttered a wicked one unkind word, he never uttered a curse because of the love that he had for us. Let's emulate Christ. Secondly, we should encourage each other. You want to get married? Watch how you react to things. Don't be always negative because you would not depend on each other emotionally. You are attached to each other emotionally and your partner needs that emotional support from you. You expect some emotional support from them. You don't start to tell them, oh, you've never succeeded at anything. I don't see you succeeding now. I've heard stories about you struggling and you never do anything good. You will them. You mess up with their self-esteem. That's not good. You need to encourage each other and you need to grow together. Get better together. Help one another. There's something that one person will have that the other person will not have. When you have a mutual goal of growing together, then it will be easy for you to help one another in your growth journey, spiritual growth, financial growth, emotional growth, and a growth in every ramification of your life. It's a mutual thing. It's a joint mission to achieve the same goal. You read the Bible together. You study the Bible together. You see, a family that prays together stays together. You pray together. You read and study the Bible together, edifying one another as much as as possible. I know after marriage you get into a routine and everything is busy and you are in a hurry to go to work, you are in a hurry to do one thing or the other, but don't forget to find time in your busy schedule. Read the word of God together. So hold hands and pray together. It's very important for the success of your marriage for all persons, men and women inclusive. Learn to be slow to speak and quick to hear. Listen more. Give him or her the attention. Give them attention. Listen to them and don't always react by speaking because you might find yourself saying something that you should not say and when words are thrown out there, it's like an egg. You might try to pack but you can never get everything out. There will always be remnants. There will always be some liquid on the floor and that's the effect of words. Words can stay with people for a very long time. You want to be careful how you speak. When you're angry, don't say anything. When you're really sure that if you open your mouth and speak, it's going to hurt your partner, do not say anything. Keep quiet. Give it some time. Then you can meet again and talk about whatever it is that you need to discuss. Communication is very important. You need to find time to really communicate your feeling. Communicate how you feel each other reaction is affecting you. Communication, real communication with each other is very, very important. Very, very important. Never, ever ignore the aspect or the part of communication. Because once communication breaks down in a marriage, that marriage starts to suffer. So that's the reason why you need to build on your communication skills. If you think that you don't understand your partner, try your best to ask questions. Is this exactly what you mean? Or do you mean more? I'd like to understand because I want to do it according to what you expect from me. I want to please you according to the Lord. Pleasing one another last but not least. The Bible said, what God has joined together, let no one put us under. Do not allow anybody come between you and your spouse. Do not allow anybody, anyone, any children, any parents, brothers, sisters, friends in the Lord. No one, nothing should come between you and your spouse. You are one. Work on your oneness. Don't allow any crack. Because many marriages that fall apart does not happen in a day. It's a slow fade. It fades over, fades with time. Before they know it, the crack is so wide that 
it becomes so difficult to mend if it gets mended or not. But as Christians, we're not expected to separate, we're not expected to divorce. God wants us to marry one another, he brings us together so that we can live together until death do us part. My prayer for you is that you learn one or two things from this discussion that we've had. If you were blessed by this topic or this discussion or these tips, do well to share this video with your friends, like, subscribe to our channels, click on the notification bell below so that you can be alerted anytime that we have new videos. I wish you a great day, a great afternoon, a great morning, a great evening wherever you are in the world and I hope that you would come back for more videos and please do well to comment, put your comments in the comment section below. I'm happy to read your comments, anything you'd like to add to this, anything topic you'd like us to discuss and anything else that you'd like us to look into, your questions about this topic, I'll be happy to answer them and God bless you. Until next time, you can join our Facebook group, Deeper Life Bible Church Singles and do well to follow us on Instagram and I'll be happy to share all our questions, our comments, our advice. Until next time, goodbye.